back into sunny Rarotonga. So we've just had breakfast and it's 7 o'clock in the morning at a place here called Murray Beach. For breakfast, it was so delicious. We had fresh fruit, scrambled eggs, bacon and bagels. It was so good I had to call my mum back in New Zealand and tell her all about it. And it went a little bit like this. Hi mum, I just had the best... Oops. Mum just said it's four o'clock in the morning there. about the time difference between Rarotonga and New Zealand. I looked it up and I found out that Rarotonga is 22 hours behind New Zealand. So it's kind of like I went back in time. So on Monday in New Zealand, I got on my plane at 9.30 in the morning. I spent four hours on the plane. I watched one movie and four TV shows and I also had a bit of a nap. When I got off the plane, it was 3.30 on Sunday. Now the last time I checked, Monday comes after Sunday. I think I need to figure some things out. Because the Earth is rotating on a pole called its axis, every day or 24 hours, it does one full rotation. Picture it like this. If I shine this torch on this globe, only some of the globe is getting the light. This is like daylight. So this other side is nighttime. As the earth turns round, different parts of the world will get the light. This gives us night and day. So when you're brushing your teeth getting ready for school, people on the other side of the world are brushing their teeth to get ready for bed. When your parents are driving to work, kids in Paris are walking home from school and people in Moscow are eating dinner. How weird is that? It wouldn't make any sense for us to all be on the same time. Half of the world would have to be nocturnal. That means they sleep during the day and work at night. I don't think anyone would ever leave their country because they just wouldn't be used to the sun. All of us would have to go to school at midnight. I don't know about you, but maths doesn't seem too appealing in the middle of the night. In the late 1800s, scientists figured out a way to divide the world into different time zones. But to build the time zone map, they had to study the Earth's movements. As the Earth moves on its axis, it moves about 15 degrees every hour. So after 24 hours, it's done a full rotation of 360 degrees. To make that a bit simpler, the Earth moves the same distance all day, every day. So every hour, that's a whole lunchtime, the Earth moves at the exact same speed, so it can get back to the exact same point at the strike of midnight. Otherwise, it might turn into a pumpkin, just like Cinderella. Or maybe even a coconut. So, because the sun is shining on a different part of the Earth at every part of the day, if I want to call my mum and tell her about how delicious my breakfast was, I need to know what time zones the two different countries are in, and I need to know what the time difference is. I just got a message from Aloha Lay 44. I found a cool website that converts to the different time zones. Awesome! Thanks, Aloha Lay 44. I'll take a look now. Okay, teachers. Now's the time to pause the video. On the website, you'll find a PDF with lots of different maths questions. You can get the kids to go onto the Time Zone Converter website and see if they can use it to figure out all the answers to those questions. Have fun! Awesome! I hope that's a lot clearer to you now. I know I understand it a lot more. Right, you guys are lucky. This is a very special episode. You get two activities in one whole episode. I'm off to go to one of the local schools called Api Avarua to learn about the culture, the dance, and maybe even join in some moves. My name is Lotiola Matiriki, Mrs. Matiriki for short. 
Um, I teach in Avalon for 10 years now. So I choreographed the, um, the culture dancing in Avalon School for since 2006. Um, the song that was just portrayed by the young maidens was based on a young couple getting married. So it was a teardrop that um, came out from the maiden that hopefully that they will live for for longer life. Mm -hmm. So do all dancers tell a story? Yes. For our culture, we base like um, we normally compose a song based on something. So like if it's a hair cutting song, mm -hmm. then all the words will be based on my hair, how it's going to be cut. Yeah. In the Cook Island, we have, uh, there's 15 islands in the Cook Island. They have their own dialects and their own songs. They, each island had to compose their own uh, lyrics and, and wordings and their meanings. Mm -hmm. What do you think makes dancing in the Cook Islands special or different to other It's the, the song they compose and how they act through the, uh, the word that they make and even the drums of the Cook Islands. Mm -hmm. Costume mm -hmm. plays partly a huge um, part of our uh, culture too. Mm -hmm. You have to go according to your theme, what you're going to tell us, what mm -hmm. you're going to portray the audience and this is how you're going to perform. Wow. So all the schools have different Yes, all the schools have different costumes. Well, thank you so much for letting us come to your school and having your kids dress up and with the drums and everything. That was really special. All right, I'm back here at the beach. Whew, and you can tell that shaking my hips was pretty difficult. I think I need to go and work on some of those moves. And so should you guys. When you have perfected the dance moves, please, please, please video yourselves. And you can send it to me on either Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag Touring Teacher Rara Tonga. And the best video will feature in the next episode. I did I guys. See you next time. Now that's all we have for Rara Tonga. But if you're sitting there thinking, oh no, I don't want it to be over, you're in luck. Click on the box or in the link below that'll take you to the dance video. In your class, watch it as many times as you like. And remember, have fun!